Hi everybody, this is Maureen Wong for mycasestudies.blogspot.com. Today we're going to be making this fall background coffee card for the Fall Coffee Lovers Blog Hub. So let's get started. I'm using um, a piece of 90 pound watercolor paper here and I am generously wetting it just with plain water and a big fat flat brush. And now I'm going to come in with my number four round brush and my new Kansai Gombi uh, watercolor paints and I'm just picking up a little bit of the yellow and dotting bits of that on there adding a li little bit more water when I think it's necessary and then I'm adding water to the orange that I picked and I'm adding dots of that onto my paper adding more water I think you can see where I'm going with this and then finally I'm going to pick a red color from that palette and I'm gonna dot that on and once I have all my dots of color, I'm gonna take a bit of water on my brush and kind of smush those colors around. I don't want them to really blend together into one solid mass, uh, but I kind of want to fill up all the white spaces and uh, move around the dots a little bit. Now I'm gonna take my heat gun and heat this until it's dry. And that looks good. If I wanted to, I could add more color here, but I'm actually happy with that. So now I've taken out my Misty, and I'm using this Tim Holtz stamp. This is a, a stamp from the Stamp Timber Blueprint stamp set that was offered from Simon Says Stamp, and I'm just repositioning that to make sure it's straight and sticking it down. And then I'm going to stamp it with. Uh, Versifying Onyx Black Ink, which is of course my favorite black ink for stamping. And that looks good, so I don't need to over stamp it. So I'm going to take out that piece of watercolor paper, my background, and I'm going to stick in this little scrap piece. And I could have realigned <laughs> my stamp, but then I'd have to clean it off and I didn't want to go through all that trouble because I'm lazy. So I just made sure that my watercolor paper was underneath the stamp when it was closed and I stamped that out on my scrap. And now what I'm going to do is take a wet erase marker and I have a piece of acetate taped over my stamp and this is to help me use my scanning cut with my image. Um, what I'm doing is basically just tracing the outline it looks like I'm actually filling it in, but that's just because the straw portion is so skinny. Um, but I'm actually just tracing an outline uh, around my cup and the little iced coffee sign that's in the stamp. And what I'm trying to do is be really, really careful and go um, just up to the line, the edge of the line, but not go outside the line because my scanning cut is going to cut just outside of my line. So if my lines are actually into the white portion of the stamp, it's going to cut with a white outline. So I'm trying to keep that close enough into the line that it will actually cut right up into that black line. And you can see that's how it looks with just the outline done compared to the original picture. And I'll show you how I'm going to use that a little later in the video. Now I'm going to take my scrap piece and I'm just wetting it with a little bit of water here and picking a green color to color my straw, a couple of greens, um, and it was turning out a little bit lighter than I wanted so I had to keep going back in and adding more color until I got that nice green tone that I wanted. So. Um, in hindsight, I didn't need to add all that water at the beginning, but you know, it still worked out. And I'm going to let that sit and dry. Now I'm going to come back in with my round brush and I'm going to wet my entire cup with water, not like a heaping amount of water, but just enough to make it all wet so that the color will spread. And I'm using the darker brown color here, but then I switched to the lighter brown color, which actually looks more like my coffee when I get it. I like mine on the light side with lots of cream or soy milk in it. Uh, so this is usually the color of my coffee in the morning. So I thought it would be fitting to paint my uh, stamp that kind of same color. And also when I get fancy schmancy coffees from Starbucks, they usually 
kind of look on the light brown side. Um, and then I'm just putting a very little bit of that brown color into the whipped cream portion of the stamp. And by the way, I just went right over the green straw in the cup with the water and the watercolor paint. And that's why I let it dry first so that the color wouldn't spread. And then I forgot to color the little iced coffee sign. So I'm using the same green that I did for the straw. Okay, and now to show you how I'm using the acetate with my scan and cut, I've gone ahead and stuck down my scrap piece with the watercolored stamp onto my mat already. And now I'm positioning my acetate over that exactly where it's supposed to go, how I drew it in, and then I'm sticking that down with just a little bit of blue painter's tape. It might not be necessary, it could probably stick, but I'm just doing that to be sure. And then I'm sticking in a plain piece of white computer paper um, between the stamped image and the cup so that it has a nice white background so that it will scan just that um, cup and I'm hitting scan and direct cut and start and you can see that's what scanned on the screen that's the whole mat and I'm going to bring in the arrows so that I um, just have the cup area highlighted just to make sure I don't get any extra cuts in there and then I'm gonna hit cut and whoops I forgot a step so I stopped it and hit quit cutting and I'm gonna show you the mistake I made is I need to take out the computer paper and take off the acetate before I tell it to cut so now I'm gonna go through that cut and OK again and hit the start button and my scan and cut is gonna cut out that cup absolutely perfectly and this is not sped up this is real time so you can see it actually goes really fast uh, I'm not sure what speed my machine is at. This is just the factory setting. Um, it's pretty fast and it does a really good job. Um, I might have put out my blade a little bit farther to get it to cut all the way through. Um, so I had to kind of um, finagle that out of there, but it actually cut really nicely. And here you can see what a nice cut that made. There's hardly any white space around the cup, and there's hardly any of the black line left on the scrap piece. So I'm really, really happy with how the scan and cut cuts that out using the little acetate trick. So I've got my background here again, and let me zoom out a little bit. And this is the stitch rectangle die set from your next stamp. I'm using the largest one which is the perfect layering size for an A2 card. And I'm just centering that over my background and I'm gonna tape that in place with some blue painter's tape and run it through my die cutting machine. I've also gotten out a card base from Paper Tray Inc's white cardstock. I like that it's a really heavy cardstock because the watercolor background is a little bit warped. I used a lot of adhesive and then the heavy weight of the cardstock base is going to help keep that panel flat. So I just stuck that down with my ATG gun and now I'm going to put some foam tape on the back of my cut out coffee cup. And I'm cutting some tiny, tiny, really skinny little strips for the iced coffee sign and then for the top of the straw. I was just going to let the top of the straw go, but then I thought, oh no, I can fit a little piece of, of tape back there, so I did. And that is basically the card, so I hope you like it, and I hope to see you over at my blog, mycasestudies.blogspot.com, and thank you very much for watching.